What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Ingmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So I've just been killing a bunch of mobs, as you can tell. Looking like a pin cushion here. Got a bunch of arrows in me. Yeah, uh, I made myself a new sword. So at the end of last episode, we were talking about getting that demonic will, and I was using the rudimentary snares, and I had prepared to make a whole bunch of them. Well, actually, I did make a whole bunch of them, and I still were using them. And then I had remembered there was a better way to do this. Mm-hmm. So I made myself a sentient sword. This is a way that you can get demonic will from monsters just by attacking them with the sword. Yeah, I had forgotten about this thing. Anyway, uh, so I have spent some time enchanting it. I have Unbreaking 3, Sharpness 5, Mending, so it auto-repairs as I kill monsters, uh, Looting, which is actually fairly important. I didn't really think about it until just a little bit ago, and then I put Looting on there. I was like, yeah, yeah, this makes a big difference. So pretty much what's going on, as you kill monsters with this, you get the demonic will on every kill. Or if you have a tartar gem in your inventory, it fills up as we saw last time. Uh, I did go ahead and I have upgraded our gem to a common tartaric gem. In fact, I have a second one. You kind of need two of them as you, you go along here. So I've been upgrading these in tandem. Just have this one in my uh, pouch so it's not gaining will as I go here. But uh, if you kill something with the, the sentient sword or with the rudimentary snare as we were doing, you only get like between one and four demonic will per kill. And it's still the same with this sword um, until you put looting on there is what I was kind of looking at here. So currently we have 852 uh, will in this gem, 852, right? So if I kill this zombie and we take a look at it, we now have 884. Yeah, that's a pretty significant increase in will as opposed to just getting between like 1 to 5, 1 to 4 per kill. So 884, we kill this guy. And now we have 914. So yeah, very, very important getting that looting on there. Now I think you can even get higher looting with uh, Astral Sorcery, but we're really not going to be messing around with that too much. Like we're getting the uh, demonic will at a pretty quick rate here. Fast enough for my liking anyway. We don't need to try and max it out. Um, so anyway, that's going to allow us to get into this binding reagent. That's the whole purpose of us doing the demonic will stuff is so that we could get to that point and be able to start crafting those things. Don't need any of this stuff, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, the binding reagent did require us to have a tar tark gem, a common variant of that with 400 will in it at the very minimum, but it only takes 10 will to craft. Okay. So <laughs> it's like a minimum threshold, but then you need like 410 to, to craft the second one because it uses 10 every time. Anyway, uh, so we need glowstone, redstone, gold, and gunpowder to make that. So that's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do that. So glowstone, redstone, gold, and it was gunpowder. Was it the nugget or was it the ingot? I don't remember. And then gunpowder. Game lagged a little bit there. It was just the nugget. Okay, so these things with the common tartaric gem with at least 400 will in there should allow us to craft this thing finally. Uh, off camera, I did finally decide I did not like the way our blood magic altar was. So I moved it all up about five blocks and I evened it out with the walkway here so we don't have that weird cutoff drop down thing. Yeah, I, w I don't know. I was thinking I was gonna have the beacons going and then having the beacons with the base, like it was kind of going out to the water and that looked weird. And I just decided, you know what? We don't need the beacons running. The beacons just have to be there, right? So let's move it up. <laughs> let's let, even it out, make it look a lot less weird. And then down below here, uh, we still have our incense altar. I had to move this all up uh, five blocks as well. So it's within the same reach as what we had before. But overall, I think I like this a lot better than what it was doing. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're in a much better spot visually with uh, the altar like this now. So let's make this guy, that, that, and then the common tartaric goes here. And oh yeah, here we go. Now we're doing stuff. Cool. So now we have a binding reagent. Awesome. So that's what we're looking for. So binding reagent, get. So that's going to allow us to make the arcane 
Ash. Wait. No, we are doing the binding reagent to make the bound blade, right? Let me double check this. Yeah, so the binding reagent plus a diamond sword will allow us to make the bound blade. And I think we needed that for like the weak blood crystals. Ah, I think that's what we were trying to do. Anyway, so let's make a diamond sword. Unless we have one already, it does not look like we do. So stick. And there we go. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, I did make myself the Ender IO Enchanter. Yeah, I just got done making this guy over here. That's why I had the uh, recipe for a book and quill. Yeah, I made the looting on this guy. There was a quest that we completed for making this, and this wasn't really that big of a deal to make. Uh, this guy did require us to make an arcane and sorcerer leader, or however you pronounce that word, and these infused diamonds, but we have infused shards, or I guess these dimensional shards already. Uh, we have some of them are already in the shard form, and we have a bunch of the ores that we're collecting. So yeah, we were able to do this just fine. Um, anyway, so now that we have that and we have this, let's see if we can do a thing over here. So again, it's been a while since I've done this stuff. So we were trying to make the bound blade, and this says in an alchemy array, I have to place that into that. So we need the arcane ash in order to do this, I do believe. So arcane ash... Uh, we need, do we already have this actually? Yeah, we do. Okay. So arcane ashes, we just place this down here and just right click. And then you place the items and I think they have to go in a specific way. So I think you put in the binding region first and then you put in the diamond sword. Let's try that. So place that in there and then the diamond sword. Yeah. It looks like things are happening here. Cool little animation. I like it. No sounds at all, though. Lots of lightning. <laughs> uh, I wonder how long this one takes. It looks like it's about done. Yeah, there we go. So now we get ourselves a bound blade. Now, the thing is, it's deactivated. Oh, it is unbreakable. That's kind of cool. It is deactivated. So to activate it, you shift right click on it, but then it starts pulling uh, LP out of your blood network just for running. And I think it uses a little bit extra every time you kill something with it. I'm not entirely positive on that but i don't think we really have any blood in our network um we need to get ourselves an orb which one's the highest tier orb we have here let's see weak blood apprentice blood this might be the highest one it is assigned to me so if i take this orb and i stick it into our blood altar it should start drawing the life essence out of the altar and putting it into my lp network now, another thing that we should do is make the divination sigil so we can actually see how much life essence is in our LP network. And that'll also show us, if I remember correctly, the tranquility percentage and the extra information that the incense altar can provide from all this stuff down here. Like, it'll tell us how good of a job we're doing with that. So we really should go ahead and make that. So let's take a look. Um... So we made the bound blade. We already have arcane ashes. Uh, we want the divination sigil. So to make that arcane ash, we need a blank slate plus redstone. Okay, do we have a slate? We don't have any slates in here. So we need living rock. Let's go ahead and take this out of here before it uses all of that. So we want to make one blank slate. So that just uses uh, 1,000 life essence, I do believe, to convert. All right, so there is our blank slate. And again, to make this guy, it is redstone and then the blank slate in the arcane ash thing. So we just did that a little bit ago. I don't think they all take the same amount of time. This one might be a quick one. So redstone, then that guy. I do like these little animations, though. They are kind of nice. It feels like there should be some sound effect that goes along with them, though. I think that's the only thing it's missing. All right, so there we go. Quest complete, divination sigil. Awesome. So we did a thing here. So this should also tell us, yeah, it says tier three. Does it, did it always say tier three on there? No, I can't remember. Mm, if I put that into like my pouch, maybe it's because I have this on me. Yeah, okay. So that definitely gives us more information. Uh, when we look at that, it just tells us how much essence is in there. But when this is in our inventory, 
it says the capacity and the tier of the altar. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so if we come down here as well, I am kind of curious to see what our tranquility is. If I right click it, oh no, no, it's in the upper left hand corner there. So it says we're at 20,044. Or I'm not 20,000, 2,044, and we get 60, is that a plus 60% bonus? I'm not entirely sure how that means. Uh, if I remove something like one of these leaves, we're at 2044. Yeah, we go to 2032. So you can see that that is affecting it, but that plus 60 has not changed. So I think we're exceeding what we need for the altar at this point for uh, the wooden paths. Yeah, when we increase the the tranquility area here, I think it increases the bonus that you can get, and then you have to put more stuff. But I think the way it's set up right now, yeah, we are pretty much maxed out on the incense altar, which is great. Um, speaking of that, we should probably give this the old right-click action here and fill up our altar. Okay, very good. Um, all right, so now that we have the divination sigil... Let's see. We were trying to see how much LP was in our in our uh, LP network, I guess. So current essence says 5,680. Now, if we put this ore back in here, it'll start draining some more, and that should be increasing. Yeah, as I'm right-clicking, that number is going up. Awesome. So now we can use our bound blade, and it'll start drawing from that LP. All right. Very, very good. I should probably eat something before I die here. Now, here's something I've noticed. Um, I've been eating a lot of the miner's stew, and we do have this nutrition thing here. So you see I'm at 98%. If I eat this, it should go down, I do believe, by 1% or something. Eh, it's staying at the same thing. But what it seems like is if I eat this miner's stew before my hunger actually goes down, like as long as I still have saturation there, it refills the saturation, and it doesn't affect my nutrition at all. So I could really, if I'm paying attention just eat minor stew for forever and never have to worry about making any more of the plowman's lunches. Yeah, I was kind of noticing that as I was doing this blood magic thing and keeping my health up. Um, so I found that kind of interesting. Another thing I would like to do is possibly make the nanobot beacon from environmental tech. Yeah. If we make the nanobot beacon, then we can have saturation full all the time and never have to worry about eating again. I think that would be fantastic. Uh, but anyway, now that we have the uh, stuff in our LP network here, uh, we can use the bound blade. If we do a shift right click on there, yeah, we can activate this thing. It gets nine hearts. Yeah, and then we can, I believe if we attack monsters, we get a chance of getting the blood shards. Okay, so now I am curious. We're not gaining any more. So I saw that number go down. I don't remember how long it takes. Yeah, it's just kind of slowly ticking down. 14,545. Okay, so yeah, it is going down. Let's go ahead and make it nighttime and see if we can get ourselves a weak blood shard here. So we got a creeper spawn. Whoop. Yeah, this thing doesn't have a lot of attack damage. That I don't think that dropped a weak blood shard. Oh, I'm using the wrong sword, actually. <laughs> Try this again with the right one. Don't blow up, Creeper. Okay, and... I don't think we got one. There's one off the spider. Okay, so quest complete, bound blade. Awesome. So we did get ourselves a weak blood shard. Now, the uses for this guy will allow us to make the large bloodstone tiles, which should allow us to replace the redstone block placeholders we have over here. Yeah, and then we can expand out our altar to a tier four uh, once we get all of the blink runes filled in these spots. Yeah, we can replace these with the... Let's, let's actually do that now. That was the uh, uses on this. Those go back into this thing, this, that. There we go. Large bloodstone tiles. Awesome. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and replace these. Then if, as long as we make the runes down here, we should be able to make ourselves a tier 4 altar, which is pretty cool. All right, guys. So we got the large bloodstone bricks in place. Yep. And I was about to start crafting up these different blink runes down here. Uh, we need 28 of them in total. In fact, we have a quest for them that says we need 28 of it, plus the bloodstone brick. Actually, I think I did mistakenly place these down as regular ones. We have to turn them into bricks. But anyway... um. 
So we need 28 of those, which means we're going to have to do 56 of the living rock turned into the blink slates or turn into the blink runes, right? Um, I kind of want to get the nanobot beacon going so I don't have to worry about constantly eating and using the thing, the um, sacrificial dagger and all this stuff. So let's look at making the nanobot beacons. So nanobot beacon. So there's two different ones. There is the ranged nanobot and then there is the personal nanobot. And the ranged one affects players within range and the personal one affects you only. And you can get this so it works cross dimension and far away from your base as long as you chunk loot it, right? Uh, so I think for the saturation, we need a tier three at the minimum, but we might see how big of a tier we can go. We might go all the way up to a tier five. I don't know if we need to do tier six. Uh, we'll see if we can do that. Oh, another thing, I did enchant this bound blade with sharpness five, so it has a little bit more attack damage and then looting which seems to drop these weak blood shards more often. At least that's kind of what it, I, I felt like. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can enchant that, and it keeps the enchantments even when you uh, have it turned on. So it does 12 attack damage with sharpness 5 on there, which is pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, so we have 28 of those weak blood shards for the future. So yeah, the nanobot beacon. So the... Well, actually, I guess we should look at the digital guide, right? Because this will tell you the information that you need to know. So yeah, range nanobot beacons, personal. We want the personal one. Um, and it gives you all the information you need to know about it, how to set them up, the size, and all this kind of stuff. So a tier 3 is a 9 by 5 by 9 A tier 4 is 11 by 6 by 11 Tier 5 is a 13 by 7 by 13 You know what? We're starting to get to the point now where that's getting excessively large, I think. Uh, if we match that up to the same size as... The Void or Miner. I think we currently have a Tier 5, right? Where's the Tier 6? No, it's Tier 5. So 11 by 8 by 11. So if we want something that's around the same size as that, let's take a look here. So 11 by 8 by 11. So that would be a Tier 4. So maybe we'll just make a Tier 4, and if we need to go bigger, we'll go bigger. I think that sounds about right. So we need 60 structural panels, 80 structure frame Tier 4. Can we even do that? We need 80 of these. Is that something? Yes, it looks like we absolutely can do that. Okay, so 80 of those. Let's start that up. And then the other thing was we needed 60 structure panels. So we already have 20 of them. So we just need 40 more. It looks like we have everything to do that. So I'll queue that up as well. Awesome. So we need to get all these blocks processed, all of them crafted. And then we have to make the actual uh, the beacon itself. So that requires us to have a, wait, a Pharaoh's beacon? Hold on a second. Personal beacon. What's a Pharaoh's beacon? So block of emerald and stone and then another star. I guess that's not a big deal. Use potions to generate beacon effects. Hmm. Okay. The cyclic thing. And then upgrade to the next tier. We need null modifiers, mica, and then, yeah, the regular tier blocks as we do. Cool. So I'll go ahead and get all these things crafted up. This isn't a thing that needs to be on display, so we'll just put it downstairs, I expect, uh, in a little area similar to what we got here, I think. Yeah, we might just do it right here next door or something. I'll figure that out. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get all that stuff set up, and then we will make ourselves our personal nanobot beacon. All right, guys, so we got ourselves a tier four personal nanobot beacon structure all set up. We have all the null modifiers in here, and the structure is valid, but it's not doing anything. We have it powered. Yep, so the next step is we need to take one of these null modifiers and then upgrade it so it actually will do something. So if we take a look at the saturation modifier, this is the thing that I really want. We do need ionite crystal, mica, null modifier, uh, Lonsdalite crystal, however you pronounce it, and some golden carrots. So I don't think we have the golden carrots because we've never made those or received those. We should be able to make those real easy. So we have everything except for a null modifier to do this. So let's grab, I don't know, how about this one? Okay, so null modifier, we'll place that into here and we do this and then we place that guy right back. So if this all works, we now have saturation. And that saturation should be indefinite, so we never have to eat again. That is, that's the big thing here. Um, so our 
nutrition information. We're at 98%. I could bring that all the way up to 100%, but it doesn't really matter. As long as we're above 90, I think, we keep all the buffs from this. And we never have to eat again, which means that I'll never move. I like it. So the question is, now that we have that saturation in there, how much is this costing us? This is costing eight, 9,000 per tick, something like that. Okay. Now, another thing we could do if we wanted to, we could get rid of our angel ring. We never have to use our angel ring again. Uh, we could do ourselves a flight modifier. Let's take a look at that. A flight modifier. Oh, there's flight speed modifier too. I wonder if that would affect... Hmm. Anyway, create a flight modifier that does require two elytras. And then it's pretty much the same kind of a recipe. I feel like we should be able to make that. We should have all of that stuff. Yeah, so all we need is a null modifier in there, in there and we can get rid of our angel ring. Now, does it really matter for us doing that? I guess one thing would be if we ever run out of power in the base, we would no longer be able to fly. So maybe I should keep the angel ring on me as a backup. Or is there even really a reason for us to swap it out? I don't know. I feel like I'm going to make this anyway. Uh, so let's just grab another one of these modifiers here. That guy. And we will put that right into here. And here's a creative flight modifier. So we place that there. What's going on? Okay, so like pretty much doubled. So it looks like it's about 8,000, 9,000, 8,500 RF per tick per one of those modifiers. So that's really not that bad. We're using 16, 17,000 RF per tick to fly. So we can get rid of this. Oh, actually, I guess I need to completely take that off my person, don't I? There we go. So now we can fly whenever we want to without needing that angel ring anymore, which is great. Uh, and we never have to eat again. So the big thing about this is the blood magic where it takes all of my hunger away or I guess all of my life away, then my hunger refills all my life back again, and I have to constantly eat. So that's one less thing that we're going to have to worry about now, which is great. Uh, let me grab this guy. I wanted to fill this back in. If we ever need to come back down here and add more modifiers or whatever, we definitely can do that. So now we can get out of here. Now, the reason why I did place this right here and not one over, so there's three blocks of space between, is because... Yeah, our um, elevator block is right here. And if this was off-centered from the elevator block, I think that would be a little bit worse than having an odd number or an even number between these two. So anyway, that's why I placed that right there instead of having only three blocks of space between. Anyway, so now that that is all done, we should be able to come over here, right-click, fill up our altar... And our hunger, our saturation, just allows us to constantly refill our health and we don't have to worry about eating all the time. That's great. So the next step is I can just throw these guys in here, let the altar do its work, mm -hmm. turn that into the blank slates, let that cycle through, and then we should be able to make all of the blank runes that we need. Oh my goodness, guys. Just having that regeneration, or I guess the saturation all the time makes it so much easier it still takes a little bit of time for it to process but yes much much better so we can make 28 of these blank runes now no problem at all um i did notice though that we should make these other orbs if we do thought not uh blood orb yeah so we currently have the tier two and the apprentice orb so we can make the tier three which requires a thomium block uh, but that also requires 25,000 LP. So this is going to use, oh, what did we get here? Oh yeah, blood four, blood altar tier four. So this is going to use one and a half of our blood altars worth of LP to do. Now the thing is, I don't think that we will be able to keep up with this. Because if I refill that, I think that's already reset. That doesn't fill it all the way up to a thousand. Then it's going to drain it all away. So we're going to have to do some stuff here to upgrade to a tier three orb. Yep. So runic capacity, I think is one of the things that we're going to want in here. Another one uh, is what we're going to want to do runes of self-sacrifice so we can put a lot more life essence into the altar every time we right click. So a couple of things that we want to do, but let's go ahead and use these blink runes here. Uh, we can grab this exchanger. So I will do a shift right click on this. That'll 
that'll change the exchanger. Uh, and then we can upgrade this. Let's do, I think it's period nine by nine. So yeah, that'll exchange all of these out for the blank rooms. There we go. There's that one, these, and those. Awesome. So now we should be at a tier four altar. Let's put this in here and we look, yeah, it says current tier four. Awesome. So yeah, I did swap the bloodstone out for the bloodstone brick. You just put four of those in your two by two crafting grid. Like you're making stone brick, no big deal. So we're able to have a tier four altar. Yeah, that's great. So that's another quest complete here. But yeah, we do have quests for the magician blood orb, quest for the master blood orb, which requires uh, the weak blood shard, which we already got ready to go here. But yeah, we need to upgrade our altar. So runa capacity. These guys are definitely something we're going to want. So that requires imbued slate. So the runa capacity will allow the blood altar to hold more life essence. I can't remember how much it is per one of these, but we're going to want like eight of them or something. So we're going to want like eight of these imbued slates. So that's a tier three requires uh, half of our blood altar worth of LP. And we have to put reinforced slates in there. Yep. Um, I already made some re did me. Yeah. Reinforced slates. I already made reinforced slates because I was going to make runes of self-sacrifice. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Yeah. The self-sacrifice requires the reinforced slates. Um, I was going to make these, but I think it's more important at this point that we do the capacity first and then we can upgrade to this. So again, the rune of capacity, let's go back to here. There's augmented capacity and then there's capacity. I think we want the capacity and then we could do augmented capacity later on. Um, I think I can't remember the exact number. I think it's if you have like 14 or more other capacity runes and the augmented capacity is actually better. I, I don't know. It's been a while. Anyway, we're only concerned about this, and we're only going to make like eight of them. So, uh, imbued slate, we need to do this eight times. So, we want to we want to set this filter here, get rid of blank slate and reinforce slate, so imbued slate. Yep, so let me go ahead and click our dagger, fill this thing all the way up. That'll do two at a time, or I guess two per blood altar, and then we need these guys over here. Do I have to set the filter? No, I think it just goes. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be able to do two of them. And then I just have to keep watch on this and make sure we keep this thing full. All right, guys. So adding in eight of those runes of capacity, we have them where our initial eight runes were brought us up to 26,000 LP, which is enough for us to make ourselves the tier three orb. Yes. That's pretty awesome. So we can grab this thing that should complete the quest. Yeah, and then we need to bind it to ourselves because it is not bound by default. So if I do a shift right click on it, then it is now currently owned by me. Awesome. So quest complete, imbued slate, quest complete, the other one. Man, we got so many quest completes here in the blood magic section, which is fantastic. Okay, so master blood orb is the next one. Let's take a look. Actually, let me do this. Uh, master blood orb. This is the next one that does require 40,000 LP. And it does require a weak blood shard. So at this point, I think it makes a lot of sense for us to upgrade to runes of sacrifice. So every time I do a right click, we could fill this thing all the way up instead of only filling up about 8,000 at a time and have to click it three, four times or whatever to completely fill it. Yeah. Anyway, so that's going to be the next thing. I'm going to replace some of these blank runes here. Maybe, maybe we'll do 10 of them with self-sacrifice. I'm not exactly sure how many we need, but yeah, that should make it so every time I right click, we do put a whole lot more in there. So doing the tier four, the weak blood shard, we should be able to get that done. So instead of just doing 10 of this self-sacrifice, we ended up doing 20. So the entire second row of all of these runes are the self-sacrifice. The first one is the augmented capacity. So I wanted to see if we have zero life essence in there and we click this thing, how much do we put in? Looks like it's quite full. So almost 20,000 for one click. So every 30 seconds, we can put about 20,000 in there. I would like to see it fill up the entire thing, but I think we're pretty good at this point. Yeah. So what I'd like to do, let's just uh, wait for a soul free to wear off again. We'll fill it all the way up. Okay. So if we can do 26,000, it takes a total of 40,000 in order to do, oh, what was the last one we were doing? 
was it this one? The Master Blood Orb? Yeah, 40,000. So if we can almost put 20,000 in there, we have over, well, we have 26,000. We should just be able to do it with one filling of this thing. I think that's going to be pretty cool. So let's just go ahead and throw this guy in here. I will speed this up a little bit. Don't want to go too crazy because I don't know if that like messes things up. We'll do one click. Oh, you know what? I might have clicked that a little early, huh? I should have waited until we were about 6,000. Ah, uh, we might run out. Oh, we did it. Okay. Ah. I was not sure if we were going to have to do that again. All right. So Master Blood Orb, we did it. And then we will shift right click and assign that to ourselves. Yep. So now we have ourselves a Master Blood Orb. Now we had one more quest in here to do a demonic slate. Now, uh, demonic slate is kind of the same thing we've been doing. Hold on a second. Let me just fill this thing up while we're looking. Uh, so a demonic slate costs 15,000 requires a tier four and yeah so if we get ourselves one of these guys and just a few seconds and a time in a bottle later we get ourselves a demonic slate nice so now we got that uh, another quest complete i like it so let's put that away we can put this away and take a look at our quest book oh that's looking pretty good pretty good so we still got this to do over here i mean we can pick up one of these beacons and that should complete that portion of the quest right that's all i wanted maybe it wants more than that let me take a look at this i didn't even look uh wants four four beacons so where do you do that and then it wants 52 blank runes oh my goodness it's so many blank runes i think i'm not entirely sure but is that 52 if we take all these and turn those all into blank slates i'm pretty sure that will be okay well that's something i'm gonna have to worry about for later uh, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. We got a lot of good stuff going on guys. That nanobot beacon. That is fantastic. Yes. Having to eat all the time, completely gone. We can do all the vein money we want to do now. We can do all the blood magic we want to do now. Don't have to constantly worrying about eating all the time. I like it. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Bye-bye.